It's a series that, well, both players have to win if they're going to take the dub for their nation, if they're going to take the dub for their country. Um, now, Po trying to clean sweep England all by himself. This is something that's never happened before in this format. First killer nearly did it to Saudi Arabia's B team. Well, I say nearly, Kalir said beat him 3-1, but he... First killer is the only player who's ever attempted this in this format. The all kill. And now Po could be the first to do it. Gom is going to need to produce the best play we've ever seen from him if he is going to come out victorious today. That is, of course, if Naipo can maintain his ridiculous level that has already seen him eliminate Jack and Toxic from the match. It's a nice save to start things off for Gom. That's promising. He's going to need a lot more where that came from if he's going to keep Naipo at bay. I'm sure Gom's been keeping a close eye on what Naipo's been up to today. And uh, he'll know what has worked and what hasn't worked for both Jack and Toxic against him. And Gom's not a player who's really known for his flick game as much as Toxic is. But he's definitely got um, an offensive repertoire that is capable of causing Naupo some problems. But the key for me, and I've said this throughout all of the series Naupo's played today, the key today seems to be not to wait for mistakes. On some days, when you're playing as Naupo, you could just sit in there and wait for mistakes. Today, I think you've got to go and force them yourself. Jack found that out after trailing by two games early on. And uh, Toxic found that out pretty much immediately, but wasn't able to find the answer. Dom's defense has been solid so far. Naipo's recoveries, of course. Quickly getting back into position, but what a flick by Gom. He's going to go up, up by one. And maybe that miracle performance is more achievable than most people might think. Gom didn't even have any boost for this. That is an unbelievable flick with the amount of speed that he had in the approach and the limited boost that he had available to him. I'm not exaggerating, he had zero when he flicked that ball. Naupo didn't have much when he flicked this one either, but the difference is the net was wide open. Big kickoff win by Naupo. Seared off to the side, really threw himself into the ball there. Covered off Gom's intended angle. Will Gom just pull it back a little bit and uh, play for a more safe strat. No, still going to go for a forcing win. This time he gets it. Into the air he goes. And I'll be the first to tell you when I think an upset is possible. I don't think Gom today... Well, I don't think anything I've ever seen from Gom is good enough to beat the Naipo that we've seen today. I really do think that Gom has to play his all-time best 1v1 series if he's going to win this. But potential ability, if we're talking pure potential, I think Gom does have that level in him eventually. It's just something I've not seen before. He's a, a player who's scored some spectacular goals and he's, I think, defended to a high enough level to be a, be a threat for, a, for Naupo today. But if Naupo just continues to consistently plow on forward, then Gom is going to have such a difficult series ahead of him here. And I don't think that's insulting to say at all. I think I'm just trying to be honest with you guys and explain the level that Naipo's at today. I mean, he's reverse, not reverse swept. He's, he's beaten Jack in game five and then swept Toxic. That really tells you all you need to know about Naipo today. Gom backs him up with a couple of fake earlier shots. And a close range flick goes past him. So two flicks for Gom have uh, produced two goals. Players really going for big kickoff wins on the outside. Gom commits more for it though. Lean back reset. Tries to get underneath the ball. Opts for the mind game after failing to do so. Gom off the wall early here. Not early enough though. The shot got away from him. Gom's actually kept Naupo at bay here. This is a great chance. Oh, what's a save by Naupo. Gom sent a double to the top corner and Naupo somehow denied it. Oh, Gom did so well to keep that ball alive, to keep that play active. It's all falling apart now, though. And it's a free goal for the Saudi Arabian. I want to give credit again. I think Gom keeping that 
ball under control for so long and keeping Naipo on the back foot for so long would have usually resulted in a goal, but a crazy save from Naipo denies him. And eventually Gom's consistent ball control came to an end. Naipo brings the ball down, shoots straight at Gom who can't clear it. Well, that looked like it was a bit of an awkward angle to save from. Gom had plenty boost to retreat. And the ball went straight at him and he tries to flick it into his own crossbar and it only gets it into the roof of the net. 5-2. Now we're looking to go five straight game wins today. Across three different series. And he's more than capable of double saving that kind of shot. Gom intelligently leaves now put it as hit the ball. Accelerates into a big run up. Perfect shot as well. Well, Gom from the ground has been clinical. From the air, he's looked very impressive as well, but he hasn't yet scored from it from any uh, aerial plays. It's been two flicks and a ground shot. Worth mentioning, actually, I don't think I told you guys before the series that Naipo just asked for the immediate match. Oh dear, well, there's a free goal for Gom. And he's gonna take it from distance. Naipo trying to get the pixel perfect shot from the edge of the box and misses the ball entirely. But yeah, I, I was asking Naipo, you know, uh, after Ahmad confirmed that his internet was not going to be um, good enough to play against Gom in the fourth series today. I asked Naipo, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to just go straight against, uh, do you want to go against Gom straight away in the ace match? Or do you want a... Uh, another player from Saudi Arabia to step in and take Ahmad's spot and he said that he wanted to go straight away. He wants to sweep England. He's that confident today and why wouldn't he be with the results he's already put on the board? Um, but you know, I think if this was uh, if this was uh, Naupo coming off the back of one ropey win and now he's facing up against a, a really you know, scary opponent, no disrespect to Gom, but if, he, if it was someone like a Moxie or uh, or some other top five, top ten ones player, I think Naupo might be saying, yeah, go on, give Rawas a go at him. <laughs> and I'll come on and last, I'll come on after and uh, beat him if I need to, try to beat him if I need to. But, you know, the fact that Naupo's beaten Gom the only other time that they've played and the fact that he's got two quality, quality wins on the board already today, I mean that his confidence will be pretty high. He's, he's asked to just go straight into the match. Of course, Gom doesn't mind. He can beat, he can confirm the win for England against Saudi Arabia with just one series win. And uh, that's not to say that this wasn't a likely outcome anyway. I think Gom was probably favoured against Ahmad, um, even if Ahmad's internet showed up for the series. I would have probably picked Gom to be the to the, to be the favourite there. So this is, in all likelihood, a match we would have seen anyway, or a series we would have seen anyway, I should say. Gom's put up a decent performance so far. He can really make it interesting at the end here. If he scores with this offensive push, but the first touch there, a bit lackluster, just gives Naipo a free 50-50. Gom's gonna get the ball for free though. Called the bluff on Naipo's boost total. Back wall demo not available to him though. And Naipo continues to get it back to the ball, even if he is starved a boost. I'm running out of time. Still, you know, technically a lot of time left, but chances are few and far between when Naupo is playing this consistently. How is this bounce going to be? Gom tries to play it infield immediately. Naupo's there. It's very important that Naupo flipped Gom with a bump in that position. I'm going to try and bring it down and get one more chance started, but Naipo's all over him. He knows better than to leave Gom for a free touch from a position like this. And now it is a must-score position for Gom, and Naipo will deny it. It's going to be game one for the Saudi Arabian. Sweeper today, who's trying to take down everybody by himself. Five straight games. Beats Jack in game five, sweeps Toxic, and now opens the series against Gom with a 1-0 win as well. And, you know, it wasn't a... It wasn't a bad attempt there by Gom, but I think it was just a bit too reliant on Naupo making mistakes. Gom has to up the level of consistency with his own offensive plays. You know, I think the key moment of the game for me uh, was that massive save Naupo had 
when he was boost starved and Gon was coming at him from all angles with aerial plays usually you know in the past when Naipo's in those kind of positions he's crumbled but usually when Gon is in those kind of positions he eventually finds a way through today Naipo's defense has been different it's been some of the best that we've ever seen from him if not the best that we've ever seen from him and the fact that he was able to survive an extended onslaught from Gom and then score when Gom finally runs out of steam. That doesn't bode well for the Englishman. Naipo starting strong in game two as well. He's got Gom in a terrible position and he'll 50 50 in after faking high early. Look how much time he's gone. Just 12 seconds and Naipo's up by two. Kickoff goal, kickoff possession. I mean, when you're Naipo. The two things might as well be the same because he's scoring so many times off these kickoff possessions that you don't really know the difference. You call me Ruben, thanks for the 16 month prime, by the way. Welcome back to the channel. I think I've uh, caught all the alerts today, but if I missed anyone, just let me know. Big bump by Gom. He's going to need to put this one in reverse, though. Besides, just a single jump to shoot. Look at the save by Naipo. He's managed to play that into a position that he can get back to. And that's just annoying for Gom, because you must have thought that he was going to get another free shot on target there. Instead, Naipo is controlling the engagement. He keeps getting back to the ball every single time. Well, he's finally missed one. The <laughs> brief flip fell short. And Gom gets the opening goal for himself. That was a pretty good try, though, by Naipo. He Took a bit of an impact when he jumped off the wall. Still nearly contorted his car to make a defensive touch. That's a good answer. If you think you're good at RL Mechanic, there's a KSA player better than you. That's true. I don't think uh, any... Well, the response was, who's better than Moxie at flicks? I think the answer is no one. I don't think, I don't think anyone from KSA has got Moxie's number with a flick game. Um... It's uh, one of the cool things, I mean, for me, one of the things that makes 1v1 so interesting and make, make, makes, uh, you know, 1v1 just every bit as interesting, if not more so, nowadays, um, even years and years after doing this. I've been doing this for well over six years now. Um, yeah, one of the things that keeps 1v1 so fresh and so interesting is the fact that individual players will have tendencies, will have play styles, will have skills that they really are the best at and uh, you, you, you've got a lot more variety when it comes to play styles that are viable in 1v1 than any other Rocket League game mode. Twos and threes kind of been figured out um, because the game modes are more simple so the game you know the, the optimal play has sort of been discovered and anything else isn't really viable because it's just not not viable to make certain offensive plays in threes because you're just going to lose out to a brain dead rush challenge. Whereas in ones, those same brain dead rush challenges are not as viable because they can get countered by different things. And defensively as well, you know, so many different play styles. I talk about this all the time, but to me, it really is fascinating that there's such a variety of styles in ones that are completely viable. And we see players with different styles, uh, you know, in the conversation for best in the world at different times, defensive players, offensive players, aerial players, grounded players, tricky players, solid players, you know, everything's viable if you're good enough at it. Naipo's defense is standing strong. Gom's just not been good enough today to cause him consistent problems. Gom's got to, I think, get a bit closer to the goal before pulling the trigger there. If he's gonna have any chance of scoring. If Naipo win, will KSA just win? Yeah, if, if whoever wins this series wins the match for their nation. Um, and if Naipo can win this, then he's done it all himself. He's uh, beaten everybody England has sent to his face against him. But it just shows you how important it is to get that first series win. Because if Jack wins there, then England go up by two and then it would be Ahmad needing to 1v3. Uh, much easier, I think, to complete the 1v3 when you don't have to do it all in one go when you do it intermittently although you know some players might prefer to just do it all in one go Naipo 
decides not to shoot from close range tight angle. I think that illustrates Naipo's mentality for today's series and today's match. He's not going all in unnecessarily. He's always got a recovery off the back of his offensive plays. We know that he's got immaculate recoveries if he wants them. So sometimes he plays with a higher risk mentality and he gets in trouble because of it. Gon will get his second goal of the game, but really, it looks like an insurmountable lead already with the way that Naupo's been playing. Said at the start of this one that Gom's going to need to produce his all-time greatest 1v1 performance to win. And this has not been Gom's all-time greatest 1v1 performance, in my opinion. I think he's somewhere in his normal level of play, which is still keeping this competitive, I might add. Suddenly we've got a two-goal game with a lot of time left. Ball shot from Gom. Quick enough to get in before Naipo's recovery. He needs to be clinical here. And he can't afford to concede again. You know, another goal for Naipo here and you're right back to looking like an impossible to win scenario. But Naipo's actually had to back off all the way there. Missed the mid boost. Here comes Gom again. Double tap attempted. Oh, but he misses it. And unfortunately, that's been the story of Gom's massive aerial plays today. Naipo's either saved them or Gom's just missed the target. He really wanted to hit that downwards underneath a pre-jump and in doing so, he hits it directly downwards into the ground. Johnny, you could be nuts at ones. You got so much knowledge. I think if I played ranked ones, I would be better than my mechanics would uh, suggest. But I wouldn't be in, uh, I wouldn't be nuts because no, one v one is the most mechanically demanding game mode. So I'm not mechanical enough to to be uh, you know nuts at ones. The only things I would be good at is, you know, knowing what to do in certain positions. But it doesn't really matter if you know what to do against a certain strategy or if you know what to do against a certain uh, kickoff if you're just going to mess up the mechanics aspect of it anyway. Um, so yeah, like I said, 1v1 is, is the most mechanically demanding game mode. If you're slower than your opponent, you're not going to touch the ball. Whereas, you know, if you're slower than your opponent in 3v3, you're still going to get chances to touch the ball because your teammates are going to create chaos and eventually you're going to get free touches. But if you don't have teammates to create chaos and threes for you, if you're just the only player on the field, then you have to create that chaos yourself. And if you don't have the mechanical ability, if you don't have the speed to do that, then your opponent's just going to control the game from start to finish. You're not going to get a touch on the ball or not going to get a relevant touch on the ball. And if your opponent's more efficient, then you're just going to run out of boost and they're going to laugh at you. So. Yeah, mechanics are kind of necessary. It's only once you get into the very top tier that games are decided by strategy. When players are at the peak of Rocket League mechanical ability, then strat strategy becomes king in ones, mentality becomes king, but yeah, the the majority of us are not there. <laughs> like, could we get TRK versus Rawas? Hopefully we could do that soon. Um, Rawas has exams this week, so it's not possible, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to make TRK versus Rawas happen. Yeah, like I said earlier, KSA have got exams recently. Oh, it's a good try to save this from Gom, but... Naupo's grind pinch is, again, incredibly successful. So accurate with those, it's honestly disgusting that he's placing grind pinches bottom corner, top shelf if he wants to. Much more comfortable win here for an output. <laughs> I'm trying to get a highlight real goal to finish off the already lost game, and now Pope mercilessly slams in at 11. TRK versus Ruas would be legendary. Yeah, TRK is, the, I think, the one player who can leapfrog Ruas because he's, he's the only player besides Ruas right now who's been extremely consistent against players they're supposed to be. Like, extremely consistent. Um, he's not lost a... Like, you know, you, you, there are some teams in other esports or even teams in Rocket League who are just very good against the lower-rated players, lower-rated teams. 
Um, I think one of the teams in, in the most recent season of RLCS that you can put into that category would be um, Space Station Gaming. They almost never lost to a team they're supposed to beat in NA um, in the past split. FaZe are another one. They, yeah, they almost never lose to a team that they're supposed to beat. But FaZe are actually better than Space Station right now because not only did they not lose to people they're supposed to beat, or not only did they not lose to people they're supposed to beat, but they also beat other top teams, where Space Station actually struggled a bit more against the other top teams than FaZe did. So, you know, you've got other teams uh, who are capable of beating the top teams, but actually struggle against the lower rated teams. And that's uh, something that you see a lot in 1v1 these days. Players like Daniel, who could beat anyone, but they've actually struggled against some lower rated players in the past six months. And they've racked up quite a few losses against players they're not supposed to lose to. Whereas Rowass and TRK, they've not lost to anyone that they're just supposed to beat easily. They've just beaten easily everyone they're supposed to. Um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of like in a category of their own, I would say, at the moment, in terms of consistency. Yeah, there's no bracket for this. This is just a one-off match. Um, I'm planning to do a few one-off matches if you guys enjoy this type of content. Because uh, for me, I really like this type of content. It's, it combines every element of uh, my, my favorite Rocket League events outside of RLCS have been national matches. Holy cow, no boat. <laughs> I just absolutely ripped a flick on target. That is unbelievable. <laughs> How was that so fast? What on earth was that? That was, that was I think, the fastest flick I've ever seen from now, but that's unreal. Just <laughs> the ball just disappeared after bouncing off the bar. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. If you just got here today, that about sums up Naupo um, and how well he's played today. He is beating England all by himself. He, he's been the man for Saudi Arabia today. And, you know, I'd like to revise my previous statement. I said that, you know, if Grom produces his greatest series of all time, he can beat Naipo. I'd like to revise that. I think even if Grom produces his greatest series of all time, he still can't beat Naipo. Naipo's just different today. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. You know, I feel like a lot of commentators in esports and even in, you know, real sports, they'll, they'll lie to you. They'll tell you that the comeback is possible. They'll tell you that the series isn't over. I'm telling you, I think it's over and it's only 3-0 with a minute and 35 gone. I think Naipo has done it. He, he's done enough. <laughs> I think it's GG's. But that is only to go and say how impressive it would be if Gom can somehow come back from this. If he can somehow figure out a way to stop Naipo, I will be so impressed because this is the best Naipo we've seen. Naipo in this format is he's different. He just has a different level of focus. He has a different level of consistency than Showmatch Naipo. And even tournament Naipo, and he's playing for only himself. It's not as consistent as KSA Naipo. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I really like this format for that reason. It combines national pride with 1v1 with crew battles, which, you know, for me, have always been my, my favorite events outside of RLCS. So this is the amalgamation of all this stuff I like to see. And uh, I, yeah, I intend to do a lot more one-off national tournaments. Uh, or national matches, I should say, with uh, countries we haven't seen before, as well as with some other iterations of lineups that we haven't seen. You know, there, there are some nations with more than three players, England being a good example of that. You know, we want to give other, we want to give other players a chance to, to rep their country, to be the hero. We'd love to see Ahmad in this format once he's uh, sorted his internet out. We'd love to see Khaled in this format for Saudi Arabia. We'd love to see, um, you know, Oski in this format for England. So many players who need to, you need to have a shot at doing what Naipo's doing today. Need to get a shot at being the guy to carry their nation to victory or contribute to their nation's victory. Yeah, just let me know in, in the comments if uh, there's any lineups. You guys can theorize the lineups that you want to see. We talked about a few earlier. You know, I think there's potential for Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium to all have standalone lineups. 
obviously uh, the Netherlands and Belgium combined with Germany in the Ones World Cup. I think they could all have their own standalone teams. Naupo is just completely merciless today. This reminds me of the Naupo that 5 0 Evo in a best of seven, which I know doesn't really make a lot of sense, but trust me, he did it. He's the only player to win 5 0 in a best of seven in Rock League history. Um, and he didn't show any mercy that day either. He just wanted to keep playing, so he intentionally forfeited a winning game. And that's the kind of man, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from Naupo right now. He was winning 10-3 in the last game, and he just scored an 11th goal because he could. He's not given anything to Gom in this match. Every single game has been more one-sided than the previous one. And really, it's no fault of Gom. When Naupo's in this zone, when he's playing like this, there's just really nothing you can do. You, you just got to pray that he's, he falls off somehow. You got to pray that his monitor turns off. You've got to hope that his uh, mum or his dad restarts the internet for no reason. Because, yeah, he has just given him nothing because, you know, gets an unreal save. <laughs> Tonight, Gom is opening goal of game. <laughs> he's, had, he's had everything today. Naupo's had all of the offensive flair that he, that he usually does. He's had all of the midfield presence that he usually does. But on top of all that, he's had brick wall defense. He's, he's never looked like such a complete player. Now, can Gom get a goal? Can Gom maybe get a clip? Because we know Gom's got clips in his back pocket. He's going to try. Double reset. Went for the triple. Ends up just being more of a flick on target. And of course, now Poe's just flip resetting in defense. Why not? Because it, for him, that's the same as just controlling the ball normally. <laughs> Gom wants a goal badly. He's trying to cut in field here and get something going. Now Poe running rings around him, though. He goes for the high pinch on target. That might be in, you know. Oh, it's hit the post. <laughs> Might have been the second pinch of the day that's bounced in off a corner well. Oh, here comes Gom. Wants the free cell dribble. Echo just standing up, waiting for it to happen. A little bit of a bot Fennec air dribble there before the air roll commenced. Oh, there's no position now for can't score from. As he effortlessly eases the ball into the roof of the net again. You know he wants 10, he wants double figures. Gom is going to play this one out. I, I, you know, really respect Gom for playing this one out. It would have been perfectly fair to forfeit this a long time ago, but he's just trying to get something for his fans to celebrate. Trying to get one goal. Oh, Naupo's been the kickoff. Okay, Gom, here's your opportunity. Can he get the ball into the net before Naupo retreats? In fact, Gom takes his time. I don't think he wanted an open net. He wants to score in a defended net. Unfortunately, he's not going to score on that defended net. Oh, he's going to hit the target. Naupo goes for another pinch. Down the line again. And the follow up shot will be good for 9 0. Can Naupo get double figures? Can Gom get a goal? That's the world we live in right now. Let's just see next goal wins. You know, we've all played five aside football where one team's dominating. There's only five minutes left. You say, okay, next goal wins. That's what Gom's saying right now. He's saying, all right, come on. Let's play for the whole series. Right now, clean slate. I don't think Naipo minds that as he goes for yet another double reset without ball cam. Oh, that would have been beautiful. I can't believe he's turned off ball cam there to spy on Gob. The catch was not there. But everything else was there for Naipo today. Disgustingly impressive performance. He sweeps England single-handedly and uh, does so with seven straight game wins after stifling the Jack. Yeah, apparently Jack reverse sweep.